Hey, Paddle Talk and World Sand Drag News fans. You can watch every episode on World Sand Drag News YouTube, along with all of our other content, which is badass sand drag racing action. Or you can find us on Spotify by searching for Paddle Talk. Check our check out our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok as well for more content on sand drag racing. Don't forget to check out our website, worldsanddragnews.com, for a list of world records, a schedule of events, articles from past races, and much more by our sponsor stuff. Speaking of our sponsors, give a shout out to excuse me, Lone Star Graphics, Lone Star Graphics, custom photo graphics and design. They were just at Dome Valley this past weekend. I'm sure getting plenty of uh, awesome shirts to the lovely people that went out the dome. We're going to talk about dome this episode. Uh, Lone Star Graphics got t-shirts, photo plaques, photo prints, mouse pads, custom award plaques, license plates, 15 ounce ceramic coffee mugs, a canvas pot holder, canvas bags, and they even got a little canvas pillows and giant printouts you can get as well. You even get stuff for your little, little tiny baby newborn if you got one of those. So go check out LoneStarGraphics.info. That is LoneStarGraphics.info. Lone Star Graphics, custom photo graphics and design. Welcome to another episode of Paddle Talk. We are a little late. Uh, it's supposed to be dropped on Thursday, the um, 29th, but we're recording on the 29th, and this will drop on Monday, whatever the date is there. But anyway... Today's episode is going to, we're going to talk about um, SoCal cutting the bikes out of the program for their next race. Um, we're going to touch on the UTV controversy stuff, and we are going to give a little shout out to the National Junior Dirt Drag's new records. But what we're going to start to show with is our Dome Valley recap, and which will basically take up most of the show. And we are joined this episode by our wonderful correspondent, Caleb Mings. We are joined nope. by Mr. Kyle Weedmeyer. Uh, he joined us for his first up, his first time last week, just for a short bit, but he's here with us this episode. And we are also joined by Brad Christopherson. So we appreciate you guys joining us this episode. And uh, let's go ahead and just kind of get into it. And uh, Caleb, give us your first kind of little recap spiel of dome valley psda race sure yeah dome was a great time uh got there kind of uh late wednesday um they had a little bit of test and tune going on um when i arrived um some killer passes being laid down on um, this weekend we've got a couple that have set uh, new wsdn world records um we're trying to get um those kind of situated uh, on the atv side trying to post everything all at once but um I will say uh, the KT camp, man, they have uh, Kelvin uh, from Team Venom um, with them right now. And my goodness, they have been putting on a clinic. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get into the winners a little bit here. And uh, you'll see Jaden much more and Cesar, Cesar Cordero, um, who are driving both of their bikes, uh, pretty much all over the place. Uh, they were in uh, the majority of finals that they entered in. Um, and you'll you'll definitely see they they took home some hardware for sure. Yeah, um, my, pick, my pick Eric Ashbaugh didn't do so hot, but um, yeah, yeah, it's his fine. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, a little bit of issues. It's fine. A little bit of issues there. He he definitely was uh, running a, a rough race for sure. It's I know Akita will have a little bit more on the the early stuff with that um, that he touched on a little bit last episode. Yeah, but yeah, um, he was still there, helped out uh, their team and stuff. Uh, they set some crazy numbers as well on uh misty's bike um yeah so that was a the 650 um nitrous motor um i believe they ran what was it brad 318 i think it was uh, yeah i think they i think they ran a 19 like right off the trailer first lick and then they ran a handful of 20s and i think they got that 18 as well that's crazy so pretty pretty cool for them um new no bar record 305 from the Venom K and T combo there, uh, that's just, I, I just so I'm blown that's so away by fast that. without a wheelie bar, dude. Three oh five, oh my god, he's running top eliminator with that bike. You realize that? <laughs> he really is. When <laughs> when a wheel doesn't come off of it. Well, Brad, Brad, what was that? I thought we'd save the best for last, but we're just gonna jump right to it. 
<laughs> you think about it in Louisiana, uh, Venom put that record down at 18, is it? Something like that. Yeah, something 18, like that. I can't 17, remember. I think it was. Oh. 17. Yeah, maybe 17. But that was a big jump from the 20s that it was before. And then here we are six months later in Doom Valley, and it goes to an 05. Oh, my. And it, 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 it is 05, a like a bunch of 05s. What was that, K Dub? Not a, not only an 05. I think that thing ran like an 05, 06, 07, pass oh, yeah. after pass after pass. It was pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Bracket racing, it, that thing. I mean, it more than backed it up. It ran like a handful oh, of. Sure. Me, it's it's going to go faster yet. Yeah, Louisiana's going to be that. nuts. I do believe that that is a different build, though, than the Venom bike. Um, it, it's definitely a different chassis. Um, it's got one hole. I, one hole. It's got one, hole, Venom one was more cylinder twin, than it? the other did. Yeah, yeah. Venom was a twin. So ben, Venom's the twin, the no bar, uh, knobby style bike. Right. World fastest the, knobby. Uh, you can still say that. With the like thirty seven out the back or something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> no it, I mean you're probably not too far yeah, off. Right, um, so. real quick, uh, K Dub, give us your quick little recap. Or your tell us about your kind of week in Dome in a short summary. All right, so I was there the whole event. I was there with uh, with uh, Nick Bennett, Eric Eshpa, and then uh, Jeff Gio. And I didn't really know what I was going to do showing up. Uh, I didn't know I was going to help them. And next thing I know, I'm just working my ass off the whole time. Uh, I pitted for Jeff Gio the whole time with his four cylinder lay down. Uh, Eric Eshpa brought the other three bikes with Nick Bennett, so he had a uh, four cylinder lay down himself. He quickly threw into the end of the track. So, uh, and then he brought, uh, we brought the two Banshees, I'm sorry, three Banshees. Uh, we 650 nitrous bike, uh, 525 tie bike. And then we brought a 475 heavy hitters bike. Uh, we did pretty good on the nitrous bike. It was actually a brand new build and, uh, and then got it running some forties and then put the bottle on it and holy crap, it ran 20 and then 18 and then a bunch of 21, 22s, 27. I think they won, what class did they win? They won 320. Yeah, they won 320. And they won. I think they won open twin on. I mean, uh, they over. They ran on. Uh, they won 320 uh, on the next day, and then uh, they won. I know they won a few things, and so the bike was doing pretty good. The 525 is a little bit of a struggle, uh, but they got it running okay. And then, uh, and then the 475 bike uh, pretty much just uh, put away after it wasn't really wasn't running that good. And then Eric Slag was kind of getting him a little bit after the crash, but. Right. All in all, it's pretty busy. Uh, Jeff kind of struggled a little bit, but he he kind of made some progress. Uh, ran a high thirty at ninety three mile an hour, but was fighting a bunch of fighting a bunch of problems. Uh, I pretty much uh, wandered around. I like I told you guys earlier, I went to Julie Julie's pits a hundred times, see what she was making, getting ice cream sandwiches. I think Brad saw me there a bunch of times. Uh, there was a taco stand right next to me. I had to have made fifty trips still. Uh, so all in all, I think it was a good trip. Hell yeah, that's a great little recap there from KW. Brad, what about your little uh, short or recap, short summary of Dome Valley, your week at Dome? It was fantastic. Weather was great. Track was good. And it was good when it was middle of the day. You know, in the in the past, it's gotten progressively better at night, but it really stayed really well maintained during the day even. <laughs> and that was kind of apparent with, with the KNT no bar running <laughs> in the middle of the day running O's. Oh, the, that was that was bitching to watch happen. Man, uh, I wish I was there. Oh, I, it, wish, I wish I was there so bad just to see the no more bike do that. I mean, some other things we'll talk about too. But I mean, yeah, go ahead. Ben. Sorry, we're 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 not excited when a no bar runs a teen right now. <laughs> <You're> asking, <laughs> it's, oh, you ran a thirteen. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's an okay pass. <laughs> Me. Now we're yeah, I, was, I was busting up when I saw Kelvin out there and they yeah, girls got there runs a teen and she's like, eh, just kinda gets up, kinda walks away dejectedly. I'm like, dude, you just ran a teen on a no bar bike. Let yeah. let's just face it, even on a bar bike, yeah. <laughs> I think anybody on a triple bar bike would be ecstatic to be in the teens. And he's just like, meh. <laughs> Well, Kane, <laughs> last time I went to Dome, K and T had a triple bar bike, and that was a bad, that was a bad boy. And that thing, uh, I mean, that thing was running teens and O's itself, and now they're freaking no bar bikes doing it. And Caesar's not having, and there wasn't even a uh, 
what they call sissy bars, that little thing, that, the little backrest thing they call them sissy bars, don't they? I don't know. We do. I guess that's just a Missouri thing. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he didn't have one of those on there. You know, he didn't have that backrest on there when he did that. That's Which insane. is crazy because he has to hold on to that thing the whole time and like no backrest or nothing going, going what, 105 mile an hour and just – like, I run a stock cylinder bike in Cub, and I need a backrest. I can't imagine <laughs> doing that with no backrest. <laughs> that's – oh, my God. That's so fast. Brad, what else do you have from Dome? What else do you want to talk about? Man, a little tight up-and-comer, Dominic Pena. Ran 380 flat on his little banshee. That's fast. Is that's that really – Is that the purple one? The purple yeah. one. I and uh, Brad, I could be wrong on this, but that might be a stock cylinder bike. I believe it is. Yes. So I 380 believe- on a stock cylinder is that's flying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. Uh, for comparison, my son Carter, we just stepped up to a cub this year, but he ran a stock cylinder before and we didn't we didn't run that fast. I think we ran an eighty three and an eighty four up here in Albany. So that's wow. that's eighty is really quick. That was pretty cool. Jacqueline Clawson on a Raptor, her husband Troy put NOS on it. Um, I know she had been running in those like mid high 60s consistently everywhere she went. Uh, she wanted to go faster. That's what he told me. He says, Ah, she just wanted to go faster. So we we're like, Okay, we'll go NOS. And I know she ran a 50 and a 51. So I think that was a pretty big step in the right direction for them. That's cool to see. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to Jackie. She was feeding me um, throughout the day as well. So <laughs> I couldn't get it, get over to the tacos on the, the far side of the track, but I got some tacos from, from Jackie on uh, one of the nights. Nice. And then Jacqueline Kurtz, too, with her weight class bike, running at full weight, ran a – I know she's got four or five, six passes, all like 380. She's just right there at the hair off that, that record uh, mm-hmm. top 10. Which I think is a three seven nine eight, if I remember correctly, just within a couple hundreds of it, she'll she'll get right in there. I'm sure, mm-hmm. pretty sure. That was cool to see too. Um, how how did your boy do? Uh okay. We fought a few learning curve stuff uh, before I cranked up the timing a little bit and kind of woke it up. And then we were running some 80s consistently, but uh, we're obviously expecting to go a tenth, if not two, faster than that. But we'll have to work through those things. They're tuned up. You get on the dyno, see if it's truly tuned as well as I think it is. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> What's his fastest I, pass on that bike? 83. 83. Nice. That was with the stock cylinder. So you're, up on, was, you're on a uh, four cub it, now? The, the cub now, we ran, um, we did run a, a 76, but everything right. else is after that. I could. And is, is that a, a four cub? Brad? Yeah, it's a 421. Yeah. Yep. So I got the hey. list of, I got a list of winners here real quick from mm-hmm. Thursday. So we'll just kind of go in order here. 320 index. Uh first place Misty Barton. Second place Bryson Turner. Uh well that's pretty cool to see for you, wasn't it, K Dub? Oh yeah. Yeah, Misty put it down all week. And a 340 index. She won the 340 index also against Bruno. I'm gonna say this wrong. Bruno Aragon. Yeah, I think uh, that was on the 525 bike. But yep, she won 340. Yep. We uh we did pretty good at index day. Uh 360 index winner was Lacey George. Second place was Chris Carlson. 380 index winner, Carlos Carrera. Second place, Jared Azevedo. I'm sure uh Carlos um is gonna hold that over him for a little bit. <laughs> oh, you bet he is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um 4-0 index, first place winner, Caleb Mings. Okay, let's go. <laughs> there we go. All right. He got uh, got the win over Burt Boatman. Okay. That's actually a, a, a good win. Burt's a damn good racer, and I know he was running real consistent, too. Good job, Caleb. Thank you. Yeah. Good shit, Caleb. 420 index winner, Maddox Pena. We're giving a shout-out to Donald. We're going to give a shout-out to Maddox for getting first place in the 420 index. I'm going to shout out to second place for the 420 index, M.A. Lamb. In the first five years I've known this dude, I called him Ma because I thought that's what you said, but it's M.A. Shout out to M.A. Lamb from Oklahoma. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I didn't know that either. No, they were cool, though. <laughs> they, come, they came all the way from Oklahoma. 
Yeah, they're good folk, man. They're awesome. Yeah, they and are. then your your bracket winners, uh first place winner, David Markle, uh second place winner, Carlos Carrera. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I uh, tell you what, David Markle has won a lot of races. I've seen him win time after time. Almost so much that it's almost expected if it's running any kind of bracket or <laughs> Well, his yeah. name does his name does pop up a lot whenever they run at Albanall and uh, even in uh, Albany, his name pops up fairly often. Yeah, and he has a weight class bike as well, and he's took all the cash a few times. You know, we get we give a uh, on episodes beforehand, we give a bunch of shout outs to uh, like Andy Seaver, like one of the yeah. silent weight class freaking warriors. It doesn't really, I mean, no offense to Andy, doesn't really run the number, but he'll just chop your freaking head off and take the win, you know? Like, he's one of those guys. Yeah, and he is, I mean, he's up there in ET as well, actually. Um, I think he's got oh. number seven on the top ten list. Oh, my bad. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but he's super consistent, too. Him and David battle it out more than anybody right now. I'm with my- Brian Kane on a brand new build. DMS Power Sports chassis, man, he was super consistent, running right at that 80 to 82, 83 mark. Yeah, as well. he, he had a couple passes, I think, that were in the 70s with that as well. He did. He did. Yeah. Nice. Shout out DMS. Yeah, he's got a good package. I think his brother built that motor, as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Alan. Yeah. The, the, I know, the and he, he was having some clutch issues as well. He was having a clutch go, so... um. Definitely, we'll, we can all expect some good numbers out of that. And I will say those uh, those DMS chassis, they're, they're really growing on me. But his track chassis, he doesn't have a lot of them out there, but they're pretty cool little pieces. Seem to be working well. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, yeah, I've heard so, having, haven't been in the track side of things for, for very long, just a few years here. Most of that's been, you know, River wash racing and outlaw racing, not so much on the 300 foot room track. So we got our Friday's winners list here from Dome. Uh, 425 and Friday's uh, limited day. Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's no, there's no nitrous, there's no turbos, no, like, there's no power outers basically. So yep. 425 twin. First place winner, Burt Boatman. Second place winner, Tessa Nunez. Look at that. And your 525 twin, first place winner, Tessa Nunez, getting the win over Misty Barton. And then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just read this whole thing, and then we'll talk about it after, because there's two names that pop up a lot. <laughs> and we're just going to – I'm just going to read it, and then we'll talk about it after. So 650 twin, first place winner, Jaden Muchmore. Second place winner, Bryson Turner. 775 twin, First place winner, Jaden Muchmore. Second place winner, Angel Castillo. Castillo, thank you. Nine nine hundred twin. First place, Cesar Cordero. Second place, Bryson Turner. Open twin. First place, Jaden Muchmore. Second place, Cesar Cordero. Thirteen twenty five triple. First place, Cesar Cordero. Second place, Jaden Muchmore. Open triple. First place, Jaden Muchmore. Second place, Cesar Cordero. 771 plus single. First place, Isaac Conscious. Second place, Michael Farmer. Open single. First place, Michael Sasali. Second place, Cameron Spittle. Did I say that right? Hopefully I did. Yep. Open but... four open four cylinder. First place, Jaden Muchmore. Second place, Caesar Cadero. Okay. So there's Jaden and Caesar. What I say, lots of Jaden and Caesars on there. <laughs> you did say that. You did say that. Uh, K Dub, Adam, you got anything to say about these uh, Friday's winners? All I know is I saw those triples battling out. Every pass I'd look over, I'd see the two K and T triples race each other. If it would be triple class, uh, I think open open class, and then you'd see K and T on their tie bikes. So they all look the same. All the tie bikes all look the same except no bar. So you are definitely correct when you say he's a lot of Jaden and, and a lot of a lot of uh, Caesar. <laughs> well then, yeah, because it's. I wonder, did they stay on the same bike or did they switch bikes for these? I wonder if the same bike got first place. They they <laughs> all so every time Caesar was on the no bar and 
Jaden was on the bar bike for the triple classes. Okay. Um, they did have different bikes for the twin classes, though. Mm-hmm. They had a 650 and a 775 bike there, too. They were just they okay. were kind of just rotating the bikes in and out of Sage and Lane. So you just can't see them see KT moving a bike to the pits and then moving a the bike back to lanes. That's insane. The clockwork for KT. Shout out KT. And we'll give a shout out to uh, Bryson Turner. They're getting some good second Ooh, places yeah. um, against the KT bikes as well in the 650 and uh, 900 twin classes there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout he out did pretty good. Shout out Tessa Nunez. Uh, kind of a small shout out, Michael Farmer, right? He's a, he's an Oregon guy, right, Brad? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, riding for uh, Steve Summerlin. And that's he's a quirk. Ra- he's racing motor. against he's racing against Isaac in the final round. I mean, he's I mean, he looks like he did his fair share of battling to get there. I mean, yeah, he def- he's a young guy too. Uh, he's been riding for. I should put a number on it, at least a couple of years for Steve on some of his bigger Raptor stuff. So he's, he's really progressing as well, too. I, I mean, will say... Um, too. Uh, what was that, Brad? Cool thing. What was that, Brad? Oh, I was just saying, Steve's got nice bikes. They're just, they're super clean. Oh, That's for sure. cool. Um, I was going to say that, you know, that was actually pretty cool to see at Dome. There was a good crowd of uh, fast four strokes um between a lot of the different camps you know you had fsa you had um cuervo you had um like uh, uh, lots of different representation different states and stuff across the west coast so it was, it was really cool to see that many fast bikes and um we actually had um i think did they actually take a class win on sunday i'm gonna peek ahead a little bit they didn't take the class win but um andres fernandez um they took the uh, double E pro uh, ATB WSCN record. That's for our single cylinder four strokes. And I believe the unlimited single cylinder four stroke uh, PSDA records as well. Oh. I believe nice. um, that record's been there for a long time too. Mm-hmm. So they ran a 35 for that record. Wow. So shout out to those guys. Shout out. Yes. I think he actually sent me that slip. Because he wanted yep. to, he wanted to be known. I think he sent it to both of us. That's what the <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, they've been fighting. They've been they've been fighting for that ever since they tied with uh, um, other old boy from Oregon. Crap, what's his name? Matt Tim. and Tim. Matt and Tim. Matt McCormick. Oh, yeah, Matt McCormick. Tim Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah shit. Four, five, six years old now, or something. Yep. That one's been there a while. Yeah, it just got dethroned. So that's. You know, good for them. Good for them. Um, yeah. Quick shout out to Tessa Nunez. Second place in 425. First place in 525. And uh, uh, shout out to Doug for stuff we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we'll move on to Saturday's list of winners. And this is the unlimited day. Yes. So everything goes in every class. Most classes. Most classes, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> single and CVT four stroke twin open unlimited. What kind of what did I just read? What 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 was that? They they've been combining some classes with that. So this is all the big single cylinder. It, it really is. It's just an open single cylinder class. We'll just call okay. it that. That's yep. that's really what it is. Well, you should have wrote that because that made it sound. I wrote the way they <laughs> decided to write it out just so that it, people wouldn't go, that's not what the class was. I think it was originally intended to, to be a little different than what it is now, just simply because there's no CBT singles that are anyone puts any time and effort into. Right. Yeah. Right. Just because they're open single class, basically. So it allows for you to sure. run, you know, whatever fuel you want. Right. For sure. For sure. So... Okay, so yeah, single and CVT four stroke twin open unlimited. First place, Charlie Smith. Second place, Jackie uh Cla- Clay- Clawson? Clayson. Yep. Yep, okay. so that's the J E single cylinder on the bottle. So okay. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah. We talked we talked about her earlier. Yes. And then yep. uh, the uh 
450 pound, 475 cc class. This is the weight class. Every time, anytime you hear anybody say weight class and they're talking about ATV drag racing, this is the class they're talking about. 450 pound uh, minimum and 475 cc maximum. First place, Jacqueline Kurtz. Second place, Brian Kane. Uh, 650 twin unlimited. First place, Bryson Turner. Second place, Jade Muchmore. Look at that. And then doubling up, 70. 775 Twin Unlimited, first place, Bryson Turner. Second place, Carter Christopherson. Look at that. Shout out. Shout out. 900 Twin Unlimited, first place, Cesar Cordero. Second place, Jose Luis de Jesus. <laughs> it, takes, it takes me a minute. You know. Open Twin Unlimited, Misty Barton getting the win over Jaden Muchmore. 1325 Triple Unlimited. Jaden Muchmore, first place. Cesar Cordero, second place. Open CC and CVT triple. Okay, that makes sense. First place, Cesar Cordero. Second place, Jaden Muchmore. Unlimited <laughs> open. So this is like the class. That's That was like, bam, you're running it. The fast, everybody, throwing together. Wow. First place, Jaden Muchmore. Second place, Jackie Clayson. Open UTV. First place, Jason Price. Second place, Josh Mayock. And then youth classes, first place, Dominic Pena. Second place, Maddox Pena. So it looks like another k t type of day on Saturday. Uh, shout out Jacqueline Kurtz getting that weight class win. And then Bryson Turner getting two wins, two big wins it looks like, you know. Um, shout out Carter. Getting that second place finish in 775. Uh, Brad, you got anything to say about Saturday? Oh, Saturday. Weight class was pretty rad, even though it was low turnout. Had a couple of other bikes that were or there earlier in the week, had transmission issues or something else or other there that couldn't allow them to run. Um, so they were already packed up and gone. Uh, one other left with them in that same group, you know, so that put us down to three from a uh, post six. Um, I think Eric, I was, I'll probably best pronounce his last name, Beersbaugh. Eshbaugh, that, yeah. He went over to the hospital, so he couldn't run it. He was, he didn't rape. He wanted his, one of his legs was pretty, pretty beat up. So he just sat today out, unfortunately. Yeah, I was aware of that. He was, he was on it for several days there, working up to that, I'm sure, just to start bugging him too much so yeah mm -hmm. but just brought our bike countdown uh, but the three that ran including caleb there uh with brian and jacqueline that's yeah, those are solid all solid people um obviously they're running low 80s caleb's getting his stuff figured out there too i think he learned a lot this weekend what did you end up uh running caleb uh i i we definitely went backwards um Best I think of the weekend was a 403. Um, I've been a 95.0 with that bike. It's just a lot of gearing and clutch uh, stuff that we're we're messing with. Um, definitely the clutch tuning is very new to us. It's been a big struggle trying to just figure everything out with that bike. And uh, I'm I'm still 30 pounds over for that class too. So your boy has to hit the gym a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, and I know you and your dad were both riding it at, at one point, right? Thing. Yeah, and we were definitely fighting back and forth on that. Probably was not a good yeah. call, but he also <laughs> he was having a blast on it. He wanted to run it in one of the index classes, and he he had no seat time on that bike. Uh, he actually ran uh in the four twenty index and broke out. He he cut like chopped ten miles an hour at the finish line and ran a four oh nine. And so I'm like, well, shoot, like that that definitely was a low four oh for him. And um, yeah. the bike was running good. That was a uh, that was Friday. No. Thursday. Um I never kept I call me a dirty sandbagger, but I, I definitely never made a full pass uh in that class. because uh, <laughs> I was scared after he ran that that oh nine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's progress though. You know yeah. you never got more yep. there. And plus you're trying to focus two different ways, two different people too though. I'm sure you'll be right in those nineties or in better shortly. That's that's the goal. KW, you probably had a good day on Saturday watching Bryson get two first place wins and Misty got a win as well. And um, 
How'd you feel after seeing that? Uh, I felt pretty good about Missy's win. Uh, we kind of struggled a little bit Saturday, but but and I was just towing Jeff around the whole time, so, so yes. I honestly didn't see a whole lot of race other than getting Jeff to the pits, bringing Jeff back, getting Missy to the pits, bringing Missy back. So I didn't really see a whole lot of the races then trying to go find some food, but uh, but and then unfortunately that's when we kind of dipped the piss in with the six fifty bike. So so, but other than that, it was all right. Yeah. Well, good. I got a I got a question for Caleb and Brad between um, that's a uh, uh, Angel's bike with Jose on there and uh, the JE bike with uh, Charlie on there. Which one uh, you think had the most uh, nitrous backfires? Oh, that's a tough one right there. <laughs> I, they they both had some passes that sound a little ugly. <laughs> Definitely. Night just comes. It, it's not all that easy. When it's working well, it's working fine. But man, it just takes one little glitch out of the 18 you've got on the bike. <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that happens. Mm-hmm. I've been that, that guy. T- <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Eric and telling Nick about this, the Nitro 650 they had. I was like, they had probably the best, like, first first like race of a nitrous bike that they possibly could have had they it ran good pretty much right off the bat no backfires no nothing the worst the worst thing that happened was they kind of nipped the piston when they got greedy towards the end but but like all in all like for a nitrous bike that was doing pretty good consistent consistent hard passes mm-hmm. brand new build that was pretty impressive that's hard to do oh yeah it's hard to bring a new build out even when you're not on the spray, but when you're out there spraying it, mm-hmm. that's like like you said, it's a whole other level of complication that you introduce to the the mix, and it's tough for sure. Yeah, uh, on kind of personal bikes, you know, one I try to purposely make them as simple as possible, whether it's be from being able to work on things, access, all that kind of stuff. So when you start adding nitrous to it, it, there's a lot more components that are in the mix now. You got to consider and check, and and it's all electronics. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the consequences are usually a lot higher stakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. When you, nitrous Shoot, don't play, um, but... probably best uh, best explanation of that too is um, Angel Castillo. Um, uh, that was on their 775 uh, nitrous bike. Um, with Tyler Hart, the bill, um, and they had they had an issue with the nitrous solenoid sticking at the top of the track. We had um, one um, uh, where Angel actually bailed on it. Um, he was kind of worried that it was not going to shut itself off. Um, he was none worse the wear for that. Um, they I don't recall if they ran another pass with that bike afterwards. Um, they did. From what I didn't think it had any damage. I don't think it never ended up hitting anything. From what I know. No, the bike was fine after that, but they had a good nitrous fire afterwards. They got a they they lit a, a filter on fire and then had to Not throw some dirt in to get the thing to extinguish itself. I think he was having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rough one. Yeah. You know, shout I was out kinda... to Angel though. He he's yeah. actually uh, he just won over in Qatar. Um, yeah, life of a jockey, man. I how mean, did he, he some... even? I want to know how he got over there. We got you know. I don't. Next. I don't know who it is that he linked up with or how how that all happened. But um, this is now the second race they've had him over there. Probably and they actually had him on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But they had him on three different bikes. Um, they had him out there on a, a triple, um, in their um ATV open class. They he took second, ran like a thirty six. I want to say thirty six, thirty two, somewhere in there. Um, so sh- that's freaking awesome for him. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, the first place in that class was uh, the old K and T triple that had the record for a long time. They're a uh, half Molly, half Thai um, nitrous bike. So you know that they were going up against the big dogs over there. And then he ran two bikes in their ATV modified class. Um, I think both of them were. Um, no bar bikes as well for that class. Nice. Sweet. I was kind of going through these pictures of Dome and I uh I came across the uh the no bar bike for KT when Caesar was riding it. The axle snap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was uh did, was anybody watching that pass when that happened? 
I was a one dot one one sixty. I do not know how he did not crash. <laughs> what did you say, K Dub? His a one dot one one sixty, and the axle snapped. Oh my god, one point one one sixty. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were on it. He was. If that anything didn't snap, it might have been another first two second pass on a no bar bike. Who knows? That <laughs> sure makes you wonder, huh? It's, it it's does. A watch. And that's why podcasts it, like this exist. We'll just wonder until we see it actually happen. It's going to happen. It'll happen at Gilbert. Mm-hmm, for I'm, sure. I'm, I'm making the call right now. It's going to happen at Gilbert. It's going to happen at Gilbert. If not, you owe me $500. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, at this point, I think it's a pretty safe bet. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Give another shout out to Lone Star Graphics, custom photo, graphic, and design. You can go on their website, lonestargraphics.info, and you can find t-shirts, photo plaques, photo prints, mouse pads, custom award plaques, license plates, 15-ounce ceramic coffee mugs, and much more. And you also find it at their trailer at any event that they are at. They were just at the PSDA race at Dove Valley, which we were just talking about a little bit. And uh, like I said, they're probably giving out many, well, they you know, there were their plaques, right? There was the Lone Star Graphics plaques, plaques at the race, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got so. their their new metal style ones, which I haven't didn't have one before, so it was pretty cool. Well, there you go. Caleb got to take him. He got the win in the four O index, and he got to take home a, a Lone Star Graphics uh, metal plaque. So that's really cool. So go to LoneStarGraphics.info. You can go to their gallery, and you can find all their pictures they ever taken. It's a great gallery. It's really you know, great historical shit in there. So go check it out. Go buy their products. Support them. Brad's got one more thing about Dome. Go ahead, Brad. I haven't seen that much carnage in a race in a long time. Axle snap, nitrous backfires off the end of the track. The K and T car that did the barrel roll, mm-hmm. that thing Gosh. hooked out hard. But man, the front tires came down, and washed it right out, and barrel rolled over. I was pretty. Know, I didn't know that was a K and T car. It's got a, it's got a couple backers between there, um, but you know, the surveys come out. And they they're hanging out with the K and T crew. So maybe a little bit more, a little bit more KT push in there. I don't specifically know if it's how how deep or involved KT is, but they're over there with them, and I just right. I could be wrong. But regardless, from car it didn't loop, but uh, probably the most major one uh, accident, whatever you want to call it, incident was uh, Cicelli, uh mm-hmm. ripping out from under him and getting his legs under the back axle and this rocket and the rotor there. I didn't get to see it up close. There's plenty of people around, but I did see yeah, it. Yeah, I was uh, I was enough of a view of that, Brad, and it was uh, not a pretty sight. Um, definitely right leg brake rotor got into the shin. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I didn't Dome. actually see. Sorry, go ahead, Billy. I was just going to say Dome Valley is just not his track. No, it's not. Yeah, um, the entire right. Cicelli crew has had some bad luck with Dome Valley. Um, this was definitely worse, I think, than their last accident out there. I, I heard that Matt did come back to the track. Um, I didn't see him. I know Michael was there and rode um, on Saturday. Um, but yeah, um, Matt is definitely going to be off the bike for a while. Um He's going to have probably a nice, nice, cool scar. Maybe he'll make a little zipper tattoo or something of that. But, uh, yeah. Shout out uh, to Matt. We hope for Good to see that he's at bro. least okay. Yeah. Race another day. You'll overcome this, dude. You will dominate. I, I will say that was that was one good thing. All he actually did accidents. win one class, though, so don't forget that. He did win a class. Uh, I think that was his brother Shit. on there. Yeah. 
So, yeah. but hey, one for, for FSA Motorsport is pretty cool. Um, I will say it was good though that everybody that had any kind of carnage and stuff, they all ended up okay. Matt was was good. They got him off the hospital, stapled him together. Um, like I said, heard he was back at the track. Um, the UTV Nicole Servi, um, minus a couple bumps and bruises, she's all good. Angel who came off the bike and had the nitrous backfire, he was he was good. Even Eric, yeah. like same thing, you know, had to go to the hospital, but came back to the track and was doing all right. So, well, it does sound like a lot of carnage. Sounds like a uh, uh, week full of adversity and a lot of overcoming of that adversity. It sounds like so awesome. Shout out to. Shout out to PSDA. Shout out to Dirt and Dunes for their pictures and their live videos for everybody until Caleb finally did something. No, I was just <laughs> hey, I was over there and I'm like, look, you know, they, they got this kind of on lock with it. And, you know, I was I was busy trying to take photos, which um, hopefully by the time you guys are listening to this podcast, we'll finally have everything uploaded. It's been a freaking pain getting these things to upload. I've had a couple errors, but um, yeah. Get some get some WSDN photos in the mix there too. Um, shout out to Caesar Notorious Drag as well. Been seeing yeah. some of his photos with that. Um, he always Same. takes awesome awesome shots. For sure, lots of good content from this weekend. Lots of good content. You can check out and the winners list on controversy. Uh, Controversy. Oh, That's yeah. what Caleb is doing. He's busy dealing with the controversy. <laughs> short. Sh- we're going to spend short time on this, and we might spend more time on it next week's episode. We probably will spend more time on next week's episode. Although, uh, we haven't done the Jade much more interview yet, so I'm per- I'm pretty sure we talked about it a lot just then as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, um, the K and T came out with uh. Interesting car. I, uh, for one, I thought it was sweet. Uh, I think a lot of people thought it was sweet, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say what I'm gonna say, and then y'all can react to it. Uh, a lot, a lot of people, um, thought it was cool, but was confused of what it was. Um, you know, it may, it may need more explaining than people, what people needed, but um, after finding out what it is, um. It's fucking sick. I mean, it it ran a three twenty five with a five at one hundred and seven mile an hour. It's insane. And it's basic. I mean, debut of it. It's a it it qualifies for the class it does, and uh you know they they're gonna get the mile per hour record which is awesome shout out to K and T for building an awesome machine and you know it qualifies as a UTV and that's kind of like the key word you have to say here is a UTV so there you go um well at the, at the end of the day the car's either built and meets meets the stated written rules or it doesn't. And not say I'm not a UTV guy. I don't even know what the rules are. What what defines it? But it's not having plastics on it or having a certain height cage or any of that kind of shit. So you can't fault a racer for building this vehicle, UTV bike, whatever it is, by the written rules. Right. And you want to road and make changes for the next season or something. So be it. Or you know, I mean, things do evolve. Not saying they're not going to and likely because of this no i mean they, i mean changes are probably <laughs> definitely going to be made because of this and then uh um i mean yeah i mean i agree with you i mean they kind of went with the rules which uh me and caleb kind of agree here we uh probably should have tightened up the terminology on the rules when whenever we meant by certain aspects of it but um after you know, it's just right now it qualifies for the twenty twenty four season, and uh, you know we're gonna get we're gonna talk with a good board and 
that we put together and we're going to have some new rules for 2025 set out as soon as possible. So don't you all worry about that. And that's all I'm going to say about that until next week's episode. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the only thing you can do. I mean, the, yeah. the written rules are the written rules by the text of the, the actual words. That's all there is to it. The intent, when you start talking about intent, you're talking about emotions and the, the unspoken things, but you can't build something based on unspoken I agree. Yeah, totally. no, a hundred percent. And you know, I I will say this, um, and I'm sure a K Dub will agree with me. Uh, like you're saying, Billy, Billy, you you're the only one that didn't get to see in person. But um, the car looks really different in person. It really does. Um, for one, it looks a fair bit wider than it does um in the pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you actually go over there, there was a lot of people saying like, oh, that's a full custom thing. They actually have a lot more OEM UTV chassis components on there than I originally thought. The I didn't thing... realize it was right next to me. I mean, I mean, they had to point it out to me to actually start finally looking at it, and then just realizing there's way more of like a Razor 900 than you thought. Be that like way first more. bench, you thought it was some kind of altered with uh, with a Z1 in it. <laughs> and I think part of that's just because they got <laughs> that they got that drag style right. cage, right? <laughs> You know, so people people immediately look at that dragster cage and they're like, "What the heck is that? That's that's some sort of dragster." But no, nah, they they had they got the inner frame rails of a Razor 900 from the back of the seat all the way to the nose of the car. Um, the rear bulkhead of it is is a stock Razor 900. Obviously, nobody uses the stock A arms or you know swing arm or anything with that because it's it's all custom stuff for that. But there's like you know there's similar like especially on the front the, the shock mounting points and stuff and like um they do have some plastics on there um obviously that's one of people's contentions and you know that's probably one of the things that will you know as bill is saying get adjusted but like there's there's a lot more utv there than people you know think about at first glance yes and we will talk about this more next episode <laughs> this is it. okay we're There's done we're done. Oh, because... well, hey, I do. I do want to talk one more thing about YouTube. No, because, um, no, 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 we got to nope, do it. We nope, got to do it. Nope, uh, nope. Another KT camp. Josh Maycock. Okay. He got second place in the open. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, there we he go. set out there. OEM engine, 50 mil turbo YXZ. Yeah. And he just reset every record from CUTV up, um, which is freaking crazy. So CUTVs are, awesome. are 50 mil turbo OEM engine. BUTV is the OEM engine unlimited turbo and AUTV is unlimited turbo and basically unlimited engine. You can do motor swaps and all sorts of stuff. They shattered the well, not shattered the record. I will give them credit here. They they just barely edged over on that on the, the higher end, but for a fifty mil turbo car, insane. And they had that thing on lock all weekend. Yeah. The three forty with a 340 with an O or 340 with a six or something like that. Two with a, a two. 340 with a two. Okay. That is uh is that the white car with the super sick paint? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that thing fucking rips. That thing OE, awesome. OE, you said OEM engine? OEM engine. That's a YXZ motor in that. Yamaha <laughs> YXZ. So he's banging them gears, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh heck yeah, he is. Yep. Dude, that thing at the top end, I was I was over getting din dinner at a uh, uh, Jackie's so pit. And they and they were making a test hit with it, and uh, hearing that thing at the top end is freaking insane. That thing hits high gear. You can hear that turbo whistling. It just ugh. <laughs> it's dope. I want to see these things at Gilbert. I want to see them at Gilbert. Come to Gilbert if you guys drive these awesome side by sides. Go to Gilbert, and just because main reason is I'm going to Gilbert, and so y'all should go to Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so we're gonna move on to our final subject of the episode we appreciate everybody who's tuned in with us so far quick shout out to uh our social medias um check out our facebook world sand drag news wsdn check out our instagram check out our tiktok check out our youtube which you're probably watching this on right now check out our spotify which is under Paddle Talk. You can search Paddle Talk on Spotify, and you will find this content right here on Spotify. Um, you can also buy our photos. Caleb, plug our photos. 
yeah, check us out. Uh, check You can go and look at all of our photos, worldsandragnews.com. Just click on our photos tab there. Um, we've got digitals. We've got uh, paper prints, posters, uh, metal prints, a whole bunch of stuff on there, um, some pretty cool things. And uh, all that uh, goes straight back into Travel Fund um, for WCN. Helps us get places so we can cover races. Um, so what we're going to talk about next is SoCal Sand Drag Association. And suck it. <laughs> they announced that they decided to suspend the motorcycle categories for the program. This is what they posted on their Facebook. SCSDA has decided to suspend the motorcycle categories from the program for our spring chaos event, March 15th to 17th. This decision does not come lightly to SCSDA as we want to provide the very best events for all sand drag racers. The blending of motorcycle and car programs has been challenging balance to provide optimal track conditions and event layout for both category types. This decision will only affect our adult motorcycle classes with the kids classes remaining intact as is. We will be evaluating additional and or new ways to potentially bring the motorcycle program back at future events. And then after so many comments, they turned off the commenting on this post. Which is always excellent. It was uh it was getting a little spicy there. So my first and my first hold on, hold on, hold on. My first question to start this off is Brad. Why haven't you been to else nor in the last year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know who Danielle is. I mean, I know his friend got told so, but I don't know her. I'm not friends with her Facebook. I've been, actually never been to the track, so I'm not even going to comment on the surface of it or any of that stuff. So it's all third hand for me. But when she's hopping on Facebook and commenting and like tearing people down about just leaving an honest response and you can't respond to her at all without her telling you to go slap yourself or something, <laughs> which she did type, which was really odd. But yeah, so it just struck me wrong. And then, you know, Christy, uh, I call her, her name now, Garnus, uh, Divorced, obviously, from Robert. But anyhow, Christy chimed in there, too. And she's obviously got tons of experience running uh, big races. You know, the Bakersfield race had the most bike entries literally ever, with the exception of Louisiana. I mean, they had hundreds of bikes there as well. I mean, they were huge. Um, so she knows what she's doing and is talking about. And Amy was just jumped all over her shit, too. But, and then... Of course, that all got deleted in the comments, whatever. So I had to screenshot it and post it myself. <laughs> Conversation. Let's see how much I can stir shit up. <laughs> well, then somebody, I don't know who it was, and we don't have to say who it was. And I, I really don't know who it was. Because uh, I know there's a lot of people who are admins to it. Shared it to uh, ATV Drag Racer. And uh, I can't find it, but I thought somebody shared it to ATV Drag Racer. Uh, yeah, group. I, I actually saw it on there this from sometime during today. I didn't see it till just a couple hours ago. And, yeah, and it, it had it had a lot of interest on it. had a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of interest on it. Here it is. I found it now. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's not on the group. It's on the page. It's on the main page. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, off rip. Uh, I think they're kind of. I don't know why you. And I said it on their post too. I don't know why anybody would turn away racers or people trying to come to your track, regardless of their bikes or jeeps or whatever. Um, it just sounds like certain people are getting upset because how a certain situation was handled, and they saw an opportunity to cut away the bikes which they call motorcycles. I don't understand that. They're not motor there's not a single motorcycle out there, Caleb. And I don't want to hear it. there's there's not a single motorcycle. <laughs> but anyway, they're they saw an opportunity to get rid of something that they thought was a nuisance and they're doing it. 
and you know i don't know if it's maybe one person or multiple people but um it's uh it's kind of messed up in a way to be honest the way they kind of handle a situation like that just be honest kw I hear, reaction i want to yeah i want to hear kw's thoughts on this before i jump in like I honestly don't really know too much about that whole situation, but we deal with kind of the same thing with like Cleves, Ohio, Gravarama, and I just kind of got used to just don't bring a bike down there because for a little bit they'd let us run, but it would just be we'd come up on our own, four of us, and then we'd run, we'd run ourselves, and then go back to the pits. I just stopped, I stopped even trying. So I, I kind of know what they're going through a little bit, but. I really don't have a comment or like a dog in the fight. I don't really know honestly what's going on over there. It sucks for the bikes who actually race there. I think you said you you go right, Caleb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel Not bad for you. Yeah. So it kind of sucks. I mean, it does suck because it takes away an event. You know, mm -hmm. it takes away an opportunity to take a machine that you've been working on all winter to go do something with it. Uh, my question to K Dub and Brad: What would Albany and Silverback do? They were just like, I no more bikes right now. We're, we oh, don't know we, what to do with them. Silverback, we'd ride. Like the bike. <laughs> like we have a kind of a smaller bike crowd, but we'd ride. We'd cause I I think I'd talk so much shit, wouldn't it be funny? But I can't imagine that happening for us. But we have some car guys who don't really like the bike guys, but but I can never imagine them just, just shutting the bike program down. The worst they'll do is they'll try to they'll try to keep the bikes from racing the cars or in like uh open mod and stuff like that, which I always think sucks because I like when we have a big class, but but yeah, we we ride. I can guarantee that. We do right. What about you? What, what about you, Brad? Yeah, you know, Albany doesn't really have that problem. All the for the most part, all the cars and, and bike guys uh, in the last at least five years, it's been actually pretty good camaraderie up here. Uh, didn't quite really be that way prior to that, you know. But it's grown into that. Uh, we don't really, we coexist pretty well. Grade the track primarily the same. Between the cars and the bikes, and we got a boatload of slow cars that just chew the track up with oh, big adult stuff, you know. But I, you, you know, they just we, we grade it enough and run it, and everybody pretty well gets along. You know, we all camp out there and hang out afterwards. And a couple of our car friends were down in Arizona at Dome for a couple of days too, hanging yeah. out. Shout out to the hills. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're good people. I've welded my junky wheelie bar out of his trailer once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we don't really have a problem with it. So uh, it's it's hard to imagine that uh, they can't figure out how to grade that track that works for both cars, tractors, jeeps, and bikes at the same time. I don't really understand why they think that needs to be so cloddy right. uh, for cars to get traction. That doesn't no. that doesn't make any sense to me. I think it's sincerely just all they, that's what they know and it's what they don't know. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they're like, oh, car show up, dig it deep. Yeah. <laughs> Run the ripper through, baby. Do it. <laughs> Rip it. It's, all we, it's the only implement we got. <laughs> I don't know. Top eliminator cars are here. Rip it and water it. You never water it for us. No. <laughs> really, how much we have to appreciate the tracks that do buy equipment. Louisiana, Jeff just bought a whole nother, so he can do it twice as fast, not alone. Yeah. Just yeah. have the right stuff to do it twice as fast. Yeah. And I will it. say, like, shout out to Jeff for that, because, I mean, y'all should go and, like, uh, just look up some of these, like, uh, even you got a farm equipment, like, auctions or something. Uh, it is shocking how expensive some of these uh these track implements can can get so it's pretty awesome to see when people can you know get different equipment and try to do something to to improve tracks yeah they totally utilize the auctions online our uh, track owner jeff sig cop this uh uh they it was something it was a tractor in illinois and it was the tractor that we use now i got it for pretty good deal and uh i'm not gonna say exact number but i mean it's good running tractor and uh it does the job and we use the two tractor system as well one's at the start line one's at the finish line and when it's time to grade it they just go down and keep doing it like that switching back and forth until it's all done yep. um yeah 
Anyway, uh, K-Dub, give a shout-out to somebody real quick or something. Shout-out to Julie Moore, beating me the whole week. Uh, shout-out Taco Sand right next to me. That was great. Uh, shout-out for Jeff, uh, letting, me, letting me have something to do all week, just towing him around. And then uh, same thing to, uh, same thing to Nick, Eric, and uh, Missy, letting them tow them around, and then just be useful for the week. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, shout-out for you guys having me on here. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, it was a good event. Dome was a good event. Awesome. Brad, give a shout out. Yeah. Joseph Evans, J motorsports, uh, pretty good friend over the years. See him interact twice a year, once a year, most time borrowed set of pals from him. He's a good dude. Um, ATV drag racer.com. Brad Sanderson. He's always in the background. Just keeping the sport alive. Yep. Hanging in the banner in the back. For sure, that's a good one. Brandon, Julie Moore, Dirt and Dudes Photography, they feed me all the time. <laughs> Ice cream, KW, you even got one. Mm-hmm. And my neighbors, the Penas, and all their three little littles riding drag bikes, man. They're great neighbors, and they're fun to be around. They got great energy. They got quite the little program going, too, because they're running three bikes, and, you know, they've got uh, Jamie and his wife and then uh, mom and dad there. Um, but they got... Mama's back there, Lacey, at the trailer with the cool-down cart, <laughs> cycling bikes through, <laughs> giving up sandwiches, I'm sure, in the background. And Jamie's down there at the start line, lining everybody up. And they got quite a program. It's cool. To, it's fun to watch. That's awesome. That's a great shout-out. That's a great shout-out. Caleb, you got anything? Uh, I don't know. Um, just stay tuned. Um, we're going to try to... Uh, Bring some ATV stuff back to California. Hopefully here. We will support that. Bring ATVs back to Elsinore. <laughs> Start a go yeah, find me. Absolutely. Caleb, I know you're you're a fan of the SoCal uh race down there and bikes and whatnot and have for a long time too, and I believe supported that same track. Yeah, so I feel for you now that you don't even have that to go run. Yeah. Uh, people are just up in arms at the moment, but it'll pass, you know. Yeah, we'll we'll see if we can. Oh. I mean, you know, if it can turn into to something where let ATV guys either kind of run their own program, do a separate race from that, or or figure out a different way to do stuff together. Um, there's definitely definitely a, a schism there um, that needs to be mended. Because I mean, I'll just I'll just say this: the sport is too small. Um, you know, we all know that we've everybody here on the podcast has been through the ups and downs uh, probably a time or two now with uh, the sport. And, um, you know, I, I'll agree with Billy. I don't think cutting anybody out of a program is, is the right way to go about it. Um, I, I obviously know a little bit more with uh, their situation and, and see a little bit more, but um, you know, I don't think that any, any of the issues that they feel like they need to overcome are really quite as insurmountable as they are. Yeah. And um, I think even some solutions would benefit both parties. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I was on the phone with a future guest. I'm not going to say who it is. I was on the phone with a future guest before we got on the show. And like, you don't need a perfect track for the bikes at those races at Elsinore. You just need a safe track. That's it. True that. That's it. That's it. And they don't feel like they have that right now. And that's why they haven't been there forever. But I agree with Caleb about everything he's saying. Let's get bikes back to Elson. Get this gravy train rolling. You got tons of support already as well. I know you do. You do. There's a few guys out there who are like, yeah, I'm on board. So let's get this thing rolling. Let's get bikes back to Elsinore. Um Thank you, K-Dub. Thank you, Brad, for joining us this time. And uh, on behalf of myself and Caleb, Brad and K-Dub, this is Paddle Talk, and we'll see you guys next week.